Well, think about how that shows up in all of us. If, if your great grandmother expressed a boundary and was abused or hurt or hung or burned at the stake, mm -hmm. you know that epigenetically, you're not going to be speaking out about things. Right, right. So you wonder why it's so hard to put words to something. You can just look up your family tree and be like, what happened the last time someone put words to a feeling? Oh, oh, so this is survival. So when I need to access my voice, why is it so hard? Why does it feel like when you tell someone to work on a boundary and you're like, just say no to dinner on Friday. Yeah. And they're like, uh. <laughs> and I'm saying to them, like, have compassion because your access to a no could have genetic imprinting that is saying you're going to die. Right. And even though it's just dinner, well, it's also disappointing people. So then you have to look, how did I relate to disappointing people in my childhood? What was I taught? What was my family system? Uh, what did it teach about it? So, you know, it's all multi-layered. Being a human is complex, but it's, it is simple in one sense that it's like, what matters to you? What do you value? If you don't know what that is, who do you look up to? Mm. Those are probably values you want to emulate. So you adopt their values. Right. And then you just find better fits. You fine tune them. Yeah, I like that idea. And I feel like it's really interesting that you brought up the values thing because that was actually something that when I exited the last relationship that I was in, I actually, it was like the week that my wife and I established that we had feelings for each other. And I was in therapy and just sort of this recognition of, you know, okay, in feeling needed, I felt wanted. And so like had to unpack that. And then I was like, okay, so all I ever wanted was for somebody to love me the way that I loved them. That was my standard. And something that you mentioned in an episode that I was listening to was like, do you even have standards? Right. And the way I established for myself before getting into something else and what I really needed to do and didn't realize until that moment was what are my core values? Mm. Sort of theoretically, I knew what they were, right? Like <laughs> yeah, they yeah. exist. Like I tried to embody things, Yeah. but the actual, you know, look at it on paper and establish this for yourself. This is how you feel about it actually led me to the opportunity to create a list of my wants, needs, and deal breakers. The list of deal breakers was mostly a list of things that were related to my ex. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah they become pretty obvious. I was like, that. none yeah. of these things, thank you. Yeah. Then I was like, but what do I really want? You know, what are the things that I'd like to have? And okay, great. If I can have those, awesome. And then there are the needs. These are the things that I will not abandon. Right. These are the things that I have to hold true to because most of my last relationship, I was abandoning myself. And my therapist had said to me, the hardest thing that will happen when you're leaving a narcissistic relationship is reclaiming your sense of self. Yeah. And I was like, that is a factual statement. Filled with so much grief. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, um, and to your point, sort of shame, the disappointment, the frustration with myself for abandoning myself and going down that road of how did I let this happen? But what I really find so beautiful about it and, and in relation to what you're saying is it prompted me to take a really hard look at myself and think, OK, this is who I perceive myself to be. But these are the actions that I'm taking. And that doesn't align. If yeah. these two things are not the same or at least, you know, trending the same direction, how can I feel that I'm being true to myself? And if I'm not being true to myself, how can I show up in other relationships in my life romantically or otherwise that actually are going to help me grow and flourish and also be the best I can be as a part of somebody else's support system? So I feel like the idea of really thinking about and understanding and establishing your values in more than a theoretical sense, really putting it on paper and forcing yourself to look at it was just a pivotal moment to be able to say, okay, this is a big part of who I am and what I care about. And if I'm going to move forward in my life, then I need to do my best to live in integrity with these things. And, and one of those values being integrity, you know, and making sure that I'm showing up for myself first and foremost. And that's something that you and Kylie talk about a lot and, and you in general with your show is that coming back to self and really saying like, how does this fit into who I am in my life? But also that we need to be open and willing to adapt because we're learning and changing and figuring that out as we go. So it's not like the shame shouldn't be associated with the fact that you're shifting. In fact, I think 
a good way to release the shame is to recognize that those shifts are happening and then also give yourself space and compassion and grace for knowing more now than maybe you knew then. Yeah, I think void of the application of the awareness is where the shame becomes toxic. Mm. So it's like, um, it's Maya Angelou who has that quote, like, when we know better, do better. Yes. Right. And what a beautiful quote. What a shareable quote. Right. <laughs> but a livable quote is a very different. It's livable, but it requires what you're saying is like, okay, I've, I've written down who I am, who I think myself to be, mm -hmm. who I want myself to be. Right. Right. My idealized self. And then it's like, who am I being? Mm. Well, that gap, as you're talking about, creates a dissonance if it's not aligned. I remember one of my favorite quotes, you probably heard me share it, is from Ram Das, where he says, um, he quotes, I think it's Gandhi, who says, um, let my life be my message. Mm -hmm. And Ram Das says, I hope that I live with the integrity, that the truths that live within me are the same as the truths that live outside of me. Ooh. And when those, when that isn't true, I'm sending a, a message of both love and fear. I think a lot about that. When I heard that, I remember exactly where I was walking. I was walking through Washington Square uh, Park in New York. Mm -hmm. And I remember just being like, oh, that's like the verbal expression of what I experience when I'm not in alignment. It's like, I'm actually sending a message of fear and love. So I'm split 